developer console we have we had way much advanced concept in developer console we're not going to cover here as of now then there is a ide called code builder which is paid ide available for only enterprise customers of salesforce uh, don't worry about this this is not going to make any impact on your learning journey then we have got vs code which is very free this is free and this is basically the tool that we would be using and you will be using to use this VS code into your Salesforce or no, not into your Salesforce or into your local machine, there are certain things that you need to install into your local machine. Uh, it could be Windows or it could be, uh, uh, yeah, it could be Windows or it could be Mac OS. Any system that you're using, there are certain things that needs to be installed. Okay, first thing is that you need to install the Visual Studio code. So just say Visual Studio code download and go to this website, whatever the first link that you get and download it depending on whatever the operating system you are using. I'm using Mac OS. So for me, this is the one for Windows. You could use this and if you're using Linux and uh, I'm, I'm assuming none of you are using Linux. So not need not to worry. So just download this, especially for uh, Windows OS, uh, Windows uh, person who are using Windows, once you have downloaded it, you will get a executable file. You need to double click on that file to install it. The VS Code will not take much time to install it. So just download it and install it. In the meantime, it is installing. You need to download another software that is called as Salesforce CLI. Salesforce CLI download. You just need to search for Salesforce CLI download and open the first link, whatever you get. Salesforce CLI, this is the one. This URL is developer.salesforce.com forward slash tools forward slash Salesforce CLI. And again, you will have to choose your operating system and download it. Again, it's special instruction for Windows users. You will have to uh, download this. You will get the executable file. Double click on that file to install it. It will take some time. The installation of CLI on Windows machine might take some time, maybe five to 10 minutes. So please wait for five to 10 minutes. And once your CLI is installed, you are done for the software installation part. Now here comes one more thing, which is we will have to install some extension pack into the VS code. So once you open your VS code, your VS code will be, uh, you might see some get started screen or something like that. I have already set up, so I'm not able to uh, show you that screen, but that's fine. Your VS code will look like, whatever it will look like, you just need to click on this uh, we just need to click on this uh, extension, which is the one, two, three, four, whatever this, you can see the icon, right? You need to click on this icon, which is extension, and you need to search for Salesforce extension pack. Salesforce extension pack. And this is the extension pack that you need to install. I'm seeing this as uninstall, but you will be seeing a button called install. Click on it, wait for some time, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. It is for both Windows and Mac OS. It will take some time to get install the uh, complete uh, Salesforce uh, extension because it has got multiple extensions. It is a pack, it has got multiple extensions. So you need to wait for some time. Once your extension is installed, for both Windows and Mac OS, please close your VS Code and restart it. This is really recommended. Close your VS Code and restart it. And once you restart your VS Code, for Windows OS, again, there is a special instruction. The reason I'm telling it because I have used Windows and uh, when we are loading the VS Code for the first time, it takes time somewhere around 
three to five minutes to get loaded everything into your uh, VS Code, all the dependencies related to SFDX and everything. It takes some time to load the dependencies. Okay, so to once your dependencies are loaded, you will see some folder called dot uh, .sfdx and dot .sf. This is the folder that you will see. Okay, and even if you don't see, don't worry. Don't worry, you will not see. What you will have to do is, for Windows, use Control Shift P. For Windows, use Control Shift P. For Mac OS, use Command Shift P. And once you use this, you will see something like this. And here you need to search for create project. And you will find something called create project with manifest. Create project with manifest. And once you select that, if it is taking some time, please wait. Do not click anywhere here and there. Wait for it until it gives you these options called standard and empty and analytics select a standard now it will ask you to give the name if it is not giving you please wait again and here i'm going to give the name if say apex hours learning whatever the name you want give it and once you hit enter it will ask you to select the location where you want it to store your project so i'm going to store the project into desktop and create the project once you create the project it will reopen the VS code. It will ask you to see, do you trust or not? I will say, yes, I trust the author. And once you click on, I trust the author for Windows machines again, I'm taking the name of Windows machines again and again, because it will take some time to load all the dependencies. Once your all the dependencies are loaded on the bottom hand side, you will see no default org set. So if you see that no default org is set, that means your complete dependency is loaded. Now this is your local machine. There is a cloud system that you have created, which is your developer org, how this VS code and the cloud systems are connected with each other, right? How these are connected, how whatever I'm doing here in VS code will get stored into the cloud, how it will happen. That will happen with this connection. So to connect, what you will have to do is again for Windows use con Control Shift P for Mac OS use Command Shift P, and then here you will have to search for auth. As soon as you search for auth, you will find authorize an org. Don't select authorize a DevHub. Select authorize an org, and it will ask which Salesforce environment you want to authorize. You will have to select project default because you don't have a sandbox. You have a developer org and that is login.salesforce.com. Then you need to give the name here. So I'm going to give it the name. So basically this is the name of my Salesforce org with, with which I'm connecting my project. So this is Apex All Learning. So I'm connecting my project there. Hit enter. And what it will do is it will open a browser for you. It will open a browser for you. Okay. It has opened the browser for me into the different window. So let me show you. It will the op open the browser something like this, where it will ask you to log in with your username and password. Okay. And I've got so many uh, orgs over here. I'm going to connect with one of my org, which is integration. This is my org. So you have to select your username and password. And this is the username which you have created, which you have provided while creating the org. This is the password which you have provided while setting up the password. Click on login. And if your username and password is correct, you, if your username and password is correct, you will be um, seeing everything. Uh, you will be presented with a screen where it will say allow access. You will have to allow the access because this is for the first time. This is not for the first time for me. That's why it's not asking me access and says authorized successful. 
but for you it it might ask access so you will have to allow access and then you will see this message once you see the message come back to your vs code and you will see the name of your org in my case i'm seeing salesforce integration org because this is a pre authorized org in your case you will see the name of your org now the connection has established now the connection has established so how you will uh, whatever you will write here let's create a class you don't know what is the class no worries use control shift p or command shift p and then search for create you will find create apex class and i will say here apex hours and done whatever the folder it is asking you to select please select it this is the class now this class is into your local system it's not there into cloud environment how it will go to do that you will have to do a right click and select deploy this source to org and once you click on select deploy this source to org on the bottom hand side you will see a success message if it is success at all and then here you will see deploy source you will see deploy source and all those things now if you go to your salesforce org which we have authorized which i have authorized here and if you don't know which org you have authorized you don't need use the name and password you see there is a small icon left to your org name if you click on that it will open your salesforce org it will open your salesforce org you don't need to put any username and password or anything so go to file open resource and search for your apex class and you will find that class is here that means you are able to deploy the code from vs code to your salesforce org this is just the basics nothing much so we don't need to worry about that so the vs code setup has been done there would be some problems if there are any issues please put into the comment section we will resolve it and with that this is the first session first video of our salesforce apex hours developer training uh, before you go you have to do a couple of things please give it a subscribe to this youtube channel if you have not already press the bell icon if you have not already done that and also share it with your friends share it with your colleagues and this is these small gestures actually motivates us to create more and more videos for you so this is it for this video thank you and thank you for watching